Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Film Club Podcast, where every month we deep dive into a different aspect of cinema, a director, franchise, genre, or actor. It does not matter, because it's always fun at the Film Club. I'm Dean. I'm Becky. And this month we're talking about animation, and this week we're talking about... Dumbo. That's right, 1941, a nice, tight, svelte, 64-minute runtime, and bringing that today is our guest... Introduce yourself. All right. Hello, I'm Reggie. This is my third time on here. It's good to be back. Welcome back. <laughs> welcome, welcome. And you brought us Dumbo today because you're a heartless monster. Because <laughs> you're like, yo, animation month, kids movies, nice, light month. I'm going to just snap your soul in half. So, <laughs> And he did. Uh, glad to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so evil. <laughs> oh. So, Reggie, you brought us Dumbo because we gave you Free range, pick whatever movie you want. Why Dumbo specifically? Well, uh, well, it's very quite simple actually. You know, Dumbo. Well, I mean, I grew up with all the Disney movies growing up, and one such movie was Dumbo. And so, I mean, as a kid, I mean, you watch it, you know, you're just like, oh, Dumbo or whatever. And um, um, as you grow up, you're kind of like, oh, this is kind of a, kind of a sad movie. <laughs> To say the very least. It it gets progressively more depressing as the movie goes on until you're at the end and you're like, Dumbo, just, it's not worth it, man. Just leave the circus. Just run away. Mm -hmm. It's it's okay. And then the ending happens in like five minutes and then it's all happy again. (laughs) What about about you, Miss Boo, Becky over there? When was the first time you saw Dumbo? Don't remember the first time. Definitely in the 90s. Uh. Yeah, you know, I was a kid. Cool, a flying elephant. I love mm-hmm. this. And then, you know, you get a little bit older and you're like, oh, wow, this is, you know, very heartbreaking. And then you get to today where it's just a bucket of tears. Just like, <laughs> oh, my God, the soul is gone. I am just a shell of a person today. Literally, Thank you, Reggie. Uh, literally you're welcome. <laughs> had to watch the Muppets afterwards to bring you back. I did. I, I had to watch the Muppet movie because I was just in a fragile place. I need something from my childhood to make me happy. Yeah, well, it, oh, I was just going to say, yeah, it does have a very um, interesting, like, moral, I mean, emotional trajectory. Yeah. Like, a lot of moments, like, oh, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Christ, Jesus, that's so sad. <laughs> and then just, Casey Jr.'s coming down yeah. the track, coming down the track. And then, like, oh, I think this is where I get, like, just my general emotional sensibility from or whatever, just these moments of pure mass of sadness and then just like oh woohoo you know fun Ab- stuff absolute Absol- joy yeah exactly you know <laughs> the the movie has this very interesting emotional emotional through line right mm-hmm. and it's that is very like honed down and so precise it is like the most distilled like walt disney like life cycle here but it's also the movie is plotted so weird mm-hmm. at 64 minutes i feel like it is it is a little drawn out <laughs> You know, but we're we're gonna get into that. But yeah. before we do, let's let everybody know what Dumbo was about, because this obscure movie probably people have never even heard about it. No, not once. No, there's probably not even a an attraction in any kind of theme park that people might have heard about. So here's Dumbo. <clears throat> Dumbo is a baby elephant that has giant ears that only his mother can love. And when Dumbo is made fun of by the circus audience, Dumbo's mother rampages, which ends up separating her and Dumbo. Now, all alone and and rejected, I can read, rejected by the other elephants, Dumbo... Elephants. elephants, (laughs) Mr. Frodo, the elephants. (laughs) By the other elephants, uh, Dumbo... I didn't, I I didn't mean I to can. do that on I that I think time. I can. By the other elephants. <laughs> I thought I could. I thought I could. Dumbo <laughs> makes friends with the circus mouse, Timothy Q. Mouse, who hatches a plot to free Dumbo's mother by making Dumbo a star. Unfortunately, Dumbo is stuck in the clown act and is too clumsy to perform anywhere else until they discover that Dumbo's giant ears that have held him back so far allow him to fly. And this makes him the number one act at the circus, and frees his mother as Dumbo, the great flying elephant, flies across America, bringing joy to all the little children. And uh, that's all like in the last five minutes. How big is that box that you're reading off of? It is (laughs) astoundingly large. Wow. But yeah, so Dumbo. Reggie, you have told me that you are a a disney animation guy like or you're an animation guy you know right, you're really right. into you know mm-hmm. classic disney stuff right this, oh yeah this is like 
golden age Disney. Mm-hmm. And this is Walt Disney's fourth film, right? Because he had like Pinocchio and Fantasia. Mm-hmm. Was, um, Snow White. Snow White. Was the first. And right. something that blows my mind is only Snow White turned a profit. Everything else was a bomb. No, yep, exactly. Most people are surprised to learn that, as my, as including myself or whatever. Like, um, in fact, the last two movies Pin- before D- Dumbo, Pinocchio, and Fantasia, both were bombs. Yeah. And so this movie, this was kind of like the rebound. Like it was like, all right, make or break. This is um, this is everything. The fate of Disney as an enterprise rests on this film or whatever. And um, and in fact, actually, the movie. Yeah, uh, you mentioned that it has like weird pacing and like it feels mm-hmm. kind of overdrawn at like just the hour, the sixty-four minutes it runs at. Yeah, it was supposed originally it was supposed to be a short film, but then at some point, Disney, Walt was like, "Oh, this feels like it could be a a movie, a feature film, mm-hmm. or whatever." I don't know if the oh shoot, but we had we just dropped two bombs or whatever. We need something else fast, you know, and that got elevated to a feature film or whatever. I don't know if that factored into it at all, but I he, would hazard to think Walt Disney, the businessman, was like. Look, I want to keep the lights on. Let's turn a fucking profit, boys. Come on, let's get together. Let's make some money. Yeah, well, we because... did a line of coke and then went out. <laughs> yeah, he he originally wasn't you know interested in making Dumbo because mm. you know the last two bombs that they had, and it was a thing where the writers I think were leaving him dailies on his desk of you know what could be in the story, and every morning he would get them, he'd read them, and then I think they stopped writing them, and he went to them and he's like well, what happens next? I need to know what happens. So it was just this thing where they, you know, kind of whet the appetite. And then it was kind of like, okay, we can do this, but we have to have an incredibly tight budget. Mm. And then Dumbo ended up bringing in, like, combined what Pinocchio and Fantasia had made. Mm-hmm. Which, okay, the the budget in the box office for this is astounding because they, this is 1941, all right? This movie cost 900 grand to make, mm-hmm. r- roughly. It brings in $1.3 million, and that was considered a financial blockbuster success. Mm-hmm. They're like, we made a $400,000 profit, boys. We're going to Red Lobster tonight. <laughs> hey, in 41? Yeah, mm-hmm. that is, you know, out of the ballpark numbers. That's right. I, I just like how now it's like, movie well, we didn't make $100 million. Mm-hmm. <sighs> We're going to have to close the studio. It only <laughs> The movie only cost like two to make. Closing the studio. <laughs> uh, losing the house and everything now. <laughs> But the other fascinating thing about that is this turned out to be, like, Walt Disney's favorite of his movies. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, like, I think he said, like, Snow White was his greatest achievement, Pinocchio is his best film, but Dumbo is his, like, personal favorite. And it's kind of fascinating knowing that because you can see Dumbo just echo through the rest of the Disney canon. Like, the cute animals, like, very emotionally sappy heartstrings going on it's a very bright and colorful movie that can get really really dark oh yeah but M- mr reggie your mm-hmm. your your thoughts you you have a whole like article in front of you that you oh in yeah fact wrote. <laughs> yeah i had the pleasure of i'm um, uh writing about dumbo for one of the one of my blogs for the frida cinema which happens to be my workplace so yeah um i covered it as part of a disney blog and yeah, just, and I mean, I rewatched it, obviously, for this episode, for the show. And so, like, it's just, um, there's just a lot to it. Within that 64 minutes, there's just a lot going on. And, like, just, like, what I talked a little bit about the animation. We talked about how it's it was, um like, only, only, quote, unquote, $900,000 <laughs> to make or whatever. But, like, and that shows in the animation, because, like, compared to Snow White, you had, like, the rotoscoped, um, rotoscoping for um, Snow White herself or whatever, mm-hmm. like, drawing mm-hmm. over an actual person and that looks kind of realistic or whatever and he, whereas here in Dumbo they're just like oh yeah they're just um they're kind of like cartoony you know humans or whatever humans are cartoony you know they're not pretending to be realistic and um like and like even the backgrounds they're like watercolor mm-hmm. they're painting watercolor and apparently that's a technique that was rarely used in Disney movies so mm-hmm. yeah just like interesting little differences from the previous movies you know like like again Snow White or even Fantasia and Pinocchio yeah, because the this Disney animation style, I know we're we're kind of sticking on the animation style, but it's so fascinating because this feels like the Disney movie when you think of a Disney mm-hmm. movie, like a classical Disney movie. Even the shorts, like the Disney shorts, the the Mickey and Friends ones, where you know they're uh, they're dealing with you know these little adventures that they go on. It's like that classic animation that makes me think of Disney. Right, and it's like you know, for them it was cheap because let's go watercolor because that's going to save us money. Because they really went to town for Pinocchio using, you know, the paints and everything. And it's like, I think it benefited the movie because it's very 
dreamlike, very dreamy. Yeah. It, you feel you feel like a kid again. You know, the circus mm-hmm. and animals. Uh, it almost kind of reminded me of like a baby nursery too. You know, very <laughs> sweet and soft, even though it's yeah very depressing. The things that are happening in the movie. Mm-hmm. I'm, do you guys want to get into the sad, sad Dumbo story? Oh, of course. <sighs> Ready, yes. ready as ever. <laughs> you, you feeling okay over there? I, I'm fine. <laughs> All right. So for the movie, I guess it opens with the storks bringing the babies mm-hmm. to the circus. Mm-hmm. Can I get a collective awe from the audience? Aww. <laughs> Thank you. And there's the, the opening stork song, you know, they're bringing the babies around. And I thought this was one of the most, like, this was establishing the key theme of the movie when we see Mrs. Jumbo, Dumbo's mom. Mm -hmm. And she is one of these people that seems like a born mother, right? She wants to be caring. She wants to have the kid. And you're like, all the other animals get their babies. And she's like, oh, I I don't get a baby. And you feel like, no, no, she's so, she's so nice. And when she does finally get Dumbo, everyone starts making fun of her. And I'm like, Mm mm-hmm. Why are all the other elephants catty bitches? I need to know this. <laughs> Why are all the other elephants so mean? They're a bunch of Karens. Mm-hmm. I know, like, I I noticed this barely for the first time. This, I, I've seen this movie a million times, but it just hit me this for the last time watching it, whatever, um, when the stork comes and he's like, oh, hey, um, are any of you expecting? And the other elephant's are like, oh, oh, not me. Certainly not me. The very idea. And I'm like, oh, my God, they're slushing. This is Jumbo. Uh, yeah. Like, I'm, I also, all the all the um, elephants are dressed up like like showgirls or whatever oh, with the little right. hats and the feathers yeah. or whatever. And I'm like, is that supposed to be like a comment? Like, is mm. Mrs. Jumbo, she's like. Oh, I wasted my youth partying. I should have been a mother. It's like, is Walt Disney playing like a morality thing hmm, kind of thing? Interesting. Because you know, it's it does kind of feel like that, where it's like, oh, she wants to be a mom, but this is like, oh, her last chance to be a mother, and then oh, she finally gets it, but she has Dumbo, who has the big funny ears, and it's like, oh, you have your kid, but your kid is like, you know, different or whatever. And everyone's making fun of her, and she becomes like very protective. Mm-hmm. And that kind of establishes to me the one of the major themes of the movie, which is that unbreakable love of, you know, mother and child, mm-hmm. which is like, again, everyone. Oh, thank you. We're going to get a lot of those. I hope not. <laughs> oh, it's it's going to happen. All right. We'll wait till we get the sad. Oh, we're going to get a few of those soon. <sighs> but the Dumbo and mom relationship, that's, you know, very sweet. And I think immediately they try and break them apart. Because Walt yeah. Disney is a heartless monster. Um, <laughs> when the kids start making fun of Dumbo at the performance, right? Mm-hmm. And you have the Irish stereotype, because Walt Disney hated the Irish, um, <laughs> making fun of Dumbo with his big ears. Well, I mean, he was also recycled, because he's the kid from Pinocchio when they get to um, the island. Oh, oh yeah, it, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, what I was looking is. at him, and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, that's right. You know, Pinocchio was right before Dumbo, and right. you know, Disney likes to recycle things to save money, obviously. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh my god, they brought him back from the island, <laughs> and he's still an asshole. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> well, well, this is where they started doing that. This is when they started recycling cells because, again, Dumbo was kind of their last in. Like, all right, everybody, we're pushing the chips in for a fourth time to try and make a success. But this kid isn't making fun of Dumbo. He's assaulting Dumbo. He's, Mm -hmm. you know, grabbing him by the ears, by the tail. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an attack. Also, the balls on this kid to jump in and beat Uh up an elephant. Yeah. (sighs) Stupid kid. (laughs) Reggie's over here like, I could take that elephant. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, that kid was a donkey, so (laughs) kind of makes sense. He's still a jackass. Exactly. (laughs) But yeah, and we get um, Mrs. Jumbo. Where's where's Mr. Jumbo? I I don't know. Yeah, yeah. what's up with that? <laughs> Actually, I am wondering that. Like, all the elephants are, are women, right? Yeah, like, there's no male, no male elephants. elephants. Well, well, maybe they are slut shaming. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, it, it's a thing where you know they probably have like an elephant stud somewhere, and it's like, okay, oh, we right. need more elephants for mm, you right. know the, for the act, and I, we have the, the one boy. The mm-hmm. stork brings them, you know, like there's. You're suggesting something so unseemly so for this podcast. Untoward. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Just being real, folks. <laughs> <laughs> but um, then, you know, she's like, you know, mama bear or mama elephant, elephant. goes mm-hmm. in to protect the you know, little little Dumbo. 
and uh, goes on a, on a rampage, probably killing at least, you know, 15 children, <laughs> um, knocking down the city blocks, uh, pro- probably destroying a lot of property. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then she goes into the jail. <laughs> they have elephant jail. Yeah. The clink. <laughs> the clink. And uh, this is where the utter sadness of Dumbo's life begins. And Reggie's like, this is such a sweet movie. <laughs> yeah. It's so cute. <laughs> so wholesome. So wholesome. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But um, but Reggie, you know, we're getting in. That's you know that opening sequence, right? That's probably what like almost fifteen twenty minutes of this movie. It's like a mm-hmm. third of it, right? Right. So I'm curious your thoughts on the setup of the movie because it's very direct and it's very quick. I feel like it's more. Um, I feel like it's efficient. It works for what it is, you know. Kind of just like it just kind of meanders around like this. Have oh no, Dumbo's mom is gone. Oh, what's happening now? Oh. Um, the other elephants are doing their act now. Oh, Dumbo's a clown now. And then and it kind of wanders its way back to, oh, yeah, by the way, his mom's still in jail, elephant jail or whatever. He <laughs> kind of forgets his mom's in jail for like 40 minutes. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah, and the fact that he's a baby also doesn't help that it's just, you know, this is a baby animal and you take, you've you taken his mother. He's been exiled from his group because it's they've turned him into a clown he <laughs> means nothing to us anymore and it's just like you'd think that as you know elephants you'd rally around and you'd take care of you know this young being and it's like i wouldn't even eat hay with him it's like bro like how Damn. you know how evil can these women be mm-hmm. again elephants catty bitches mm-hmm. all the a lot of them <laughs> Just in this movie. Just, just not, this, not all of them. Not all elephants. Not all elephants. Not all elephants. Not, not, not all elephants. <laughs> Mr. Frodo, look, it's the elephants. Oh, They're a bunch of catty bitches. Right. Oh, God. Uh, anytime I can slide in a uh, Lord of the Rings reference, I'm going for it. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> all the time. But we get the beginnings of, you know, the, the tragic downfall of, of Dumbo. But we also get introduced to Timothy Q. Mouse. Mm. And I was like, I because I don't know that much about dumbo i i guess i neglected to mention i've never seen this movie before oh Oh, okay wow Uh, i i wanted to get a little deep in before i get yelled at for never seeing dumbo (laughs) but yeah i have never seen dumbo before (laughs) i know (laughs) but i knew the mouse because i recognize that design because i've been to disneyland before and i was like oh that's have you Uh, once or twice (laughs) really (laughs) once or twice you know what is it like (laughs) it's it's very nice uh you know magic kingdom all that but, oh, you've been to the Magic Kingdom too? Wow. <laughs> I, I mean, yes, but whatever. I'm not going to get into that. But I know the mouse from like, you know, oh, it's in the ride. And that's like, it's Dumbo and the mouse. And those mm-hmm. two are the two like main characters of the of the movie. And I thought he was going to be in the beginning of it. And no, he, he comes in pretty late. He, yeah, he comes in like almost like at the midpoint, right? Yeah, like around there, like in the middle. That's kind of late to introduce like a major character, oh, yeah, right? Absolutely. Because mm-hmm. I feel like in Pinocchio we get like Geppetto, Pinocchio, Jiminy, Jiminy Cricket, mm-hmm. like all in the first like ten minutes, and we're like ready to go. Yeah, it's yeah, it is very strange. Like I don't know, I just even Timothy as a character feels kind of strange. Like I mean, he's his friend or whatever, but like you said, they introduce him late or whatever, and like yeah, I it's almost well, it's kind of like well, because Dumbo doesn't talk, so it's kind of like oh, we need somebody to help. A mouthpiece. A, a mouthpiece. A mm. mouthpiece. <laughs> a mouthpiece. There you go, <laughs> gentlemen. We have come with the puns today, <laughs> <laughs> and he feels kind of like a Jiminy Cricket light mm-hmm. a little bit, um, because he's playing. He's he's basically Dumbo's caretaker now that his mom's right. gone, right? Could it be a thing where you know they want us to feel the isolation that Dumbo feels because he's oh, just you know. After he loses his mother, it's just him on his own. And you kind of feel that aloneness, that emptiness that he has. And then it's, you know, things start to turn around once Timothy makes his appearance. Right. So it's like, I think they wanted us to kind of feel like down on your luck. You don't have family. You don't have anybody. And then now you have this person that can help you, even though it is a mouse. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm just trying to imagine now. Imagine this. Imagine Dumbo, but without Timothy in it. Oh. oh, oh God! This no. would be so sad. <laughs> we this would be sadder than leaving Las Vegas. Oh Lord! Oh God! Not leaving Las Vegas. That, that move. That talk about movies that broke Boo's heart. Oh mm-hmm. Lord! But um, the the other thing about the whole Timothy Dumbo dynamic is it kind of plays into another part of the movie. Is this atypical friendship, right? Mm-hmm. Where traditionally, you know, elephants and mice are not. On the, mm-hmm. on the greatest of terms. Right. I mean, that's a whole joke in the movie where Timothy, you know, scares all the other catty bitch elephants because, you know, they're they're being mean to Dumbo. And he's yeah. like, I'm Timothy Q. Mouse. 
back the fuck up, all right? You know. And apparently in the book, uh, Timothy was originally a Robin. Yeah, because oh, this is based okay. on a book, right? Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I knew there was a Robin, mm-hmm. but I didn't know that was it was Timothy. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, so they swapped uh, the Robin out for Timothy being a mouse mm-hmm. because... You know, that's the the lore, the legend that elephants are afraid of mice, so Mm -hmm. make it funny. And then you have a cute mouse and a cute... um, Baby Baby elephant. elephant. Well, no, the the costume. Baby elephant. Oh, yeah. Oh, in the the ring. Oh, yeah, yeah, the the little band costume. (laughs) Yeah, band costume, ringleader, whatever (laughs) he is. It's like, yeah, you know, you have him this cute costume, and then he fits on the top of the ride. Mm -hmm. And it it is just kind of... It is kind of cute that they build this thing where it's like... Oh, yeah, you two are different, and, but you can still be friends, you know? Like, mm-hmm. historically, you guys should be enemies, but you're, like, really, really close. And it's, like, the whole movie is, like, kind of, like, building up that acceptance thing. Like, all mm-hmm. the, the other elephants reject Dumbo, and Dumbo's like, I want to be accepted, and, you mm-hmm. know, I want to be part of the game. And then he gets, you know, relegated to the clowns. Mm-hmm. The dirty, evil clowns <laughs> over there in Clownland. <laughs> Why are the clowns second-class citizens, even in the circus? <laughs> what is this? It's even so lower than the elephants? <laughs> They're lower than the animals in this movie. They're just like, ah. I mean, we might be, you know, donkeys, but at least we're not the clowns. Because <laughs> the clowns are kind of mean to Dumbo. They are. Yeah, well, see, I have conflicted feelings about the clowns. Because, like, yeah, their act is pretty pretty brutal. <laughs> but it's at some point, one of them says, oh, careful, you're going to hurt the little guy. And then they're like, oh, no, come on, elephants don't have feelings. They're, they're made of rubber. And yeah, it's yeah. just like... That's so called <laughs> elephants don't have feelings. It's like they're living, breathing animals. <laughs> like, yes, they have feelings. Is that is that an elephant in the room we have to get by? Is the animal cruelty shown in this oh movie? Oh, my God. Because <laughs> we talked about this on the way over to record was like... Man, there's a lot of like they're kind of rough on the animals in this movie, right? Mm-hmm. You know, they they whip the elephants or they're like, you know, push them around, all that stuff. And I felt it was part of kind of building the plot and the tone of the movie of mm-hmm. us being like, "Oh, don't hit the elephants." Like that puts us immediately on Dumbo's side, you know, the old thing where, you know, save the cat, kick the cat. Mm-hmm. How, how do you establish a villain and how do you establish a hero? Heroes yeah. save the cat in the first mm-hmm. 10 minutes. Villains, they kick the cat. That's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I'm wondering, you know, Reggie, your view on the, like, animal mm-hmm. cruelty in the movie. Um, you know, Becky, you too. You know, which yeah. one wants to talk about I think Reggie should go animals? first. Yeah, well, I mean, the most salient example is when Mrs. Jumbo is taken away from Dumbo and locked up. And so we think about, like, oh, that's terrible. Or she's just protecting her baby, you know? Mm-hmm. And some people, um, I think it's on TV Tropes, this website, they're analyzing Dumbo. And they're like, it's funny because, you know, in real life, like, um, an elephant were ever to like get go crazy as a kid in the enclosure. It was like, oh yeah, that ele- that they wouldn't be locked up. That elephant would have been put down right in the mm, spot or whatever. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like in fact, illegally, if that actually happened, the the circus would probably be held liable if they didn't kill D- Mrs. Jumbo or whatever. Because it's like, oh, you can't let this. Like we saw that with um Harambe, you know, R.I.P. You know, yeah. Like the kid broke in. R.I.P. Yeah. Mr. Harambe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He broke in. Um, and Harambe started like like throwing him or tossing him around and mm-hmm. stuff. And then they rushed him. They shot Harambe. Smoked Harambe. Yeah. You know? They smoked Harambe. Yeah, they did. They they came in, put the gat to the side, and dropped Harambe. Exactly. It's turning into a noir over here. <laughs> Look here, Mr. Harambe. She <laughs> pew pew. Yeah, Harambe, Mrs. Jumbo, so sad. Lots yeah. of animals, you know, mm-hmm. anything happens, they, you know, attack right away. They want to put them down. And it's like, well, you know, there's probably a reason they've been provoked and they are attacking. Exactly. But it's like, no, because they did this, we got to do that. And it's like, well, why don't you, you know, train people to be better mm-hmm. people? Exactly. Like this little bastard it's, it's, in this movie. Oh my God. It's I want hard to for me to kid. train myself to not be delicious to mountain lions. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hey, when we hike, we hike carefully. You're not out there, you know, oh, mountain lion. Okay, cool. Let me run and, you know, play with his teeth. Let me, you know, go pet him. I did that once and it worked out wonderfully for uh-huh. me. I don't know what uh-huh. you want from me. <laughs> but um, what is it? So we get to the we get to this where Dumbo, he can't play with the other elephants, you know, in their act because he's he got the big ears. He's too clumsy. So they put him with the clowns, and well, right, they're also old bags too that aren't going to mm-hmm. play with him. It's also true. He, there's no other like, there, okay, one. There's no other baby elephants, but they do establish that all the other animals get little babies and stuff like that. But we don't see any other baby animals after the stork sequence, right? We see like a a brief like montage of you know like the, el- the babies sleeping with their moms or whatever mm-hmm. during that baby mind scene, but that's it. Like we don't 
Well, actually, we don't see much of the other animals either outside of like like brief establishing shots, you know? The yeah. background action. Yeah, exactly. And that's probably a thing where it's just saving time on like cells and sequencing oh, and absolutely. stuff like that. Yeah. But you also invoked the the song that shall not oh. be named. <laughs> so baby mine, because this is when this sequence come up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So who's who started crying during this uh, this sequence? <laughs> I I know I may I maintain my strength. Uh, 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 Becky, what about you? Yeah, I lost it. <laughs> I tried, and no, it, no, I failed miserably. But Reggie, are you a crier during this yeah. song? Well, I am very proud to report that I too maintain my strength during this scene. And um, yeah, no, like it's interesting because I've never like I've never I don't think I've ever cried during this scene or whatever. But like. And I know everybody's like, oh my god, that song is just <laughs> like it just provokes tears or whatever. It's yeah, like, yeah, and so yeah, it is of course very sad, you know. But it's also cute too because you get to see the um the mamas with their babies, you know, yeah. like the hippo and her baby sleeping in the water, and the hyenas laughing in their sleep. Like, mm-hmm. So yeah, like, but yeah, and just um, how yeah, it's just sad, you know, obviously because Dumbo and Mrs. Jumbo and she's just cradling him through the bars or whatever. The yeah, truck. <laughs> it it's reestablishing the theme of you know that unbreakable you know uh, love between mother and child and all that. I, I, again, like I didn't watch this as a kid, so I don't have that like big emotional like nostalgia for the song. I thought it was a very good song. Mm-hmm. Uh, my brother passed by during that uh, when he was in the kitchen, and uh, yeah, he he noped the fuck out of that when the opening thing came in. <laughs> I, well, I mean, you know, last week's episode we were plugging this episode, and he got on a spiel because you know that's his and your mom's uh yeah when my when he was a baby my mom used to sing all of us a different song mm-hmm. and his was baby mine from dumbo mm-hmm. and he's like oh you know yeah, heartwarming or whatever and he had a dumbo statue mm-hmm. and it broke and it broke and separated dumbo from his mom and it <gasps> oh, broke no. my brother's soul like it ruined his day <laughs> like it it he came out and he was like mom i'm so sorry and he starts crying right <laughs> And this was recent. That, oh, oh, that it broke. This wasn't like my brother oh, at geez. six. This is my brother at like 25, oh. 24, <laughs> like broke his soul. And um, yeah, but he he's like, he walks past the kitchen and the song starts playing. And he's like, oh, Dean, what are you watching? And he sees what it is. He's like, nope, nope, mm-hmm. nope. The fuck out of this one. And Smart man. <laughs> but like, I don't have that kind of like deep emotional bonding to the song. So when I'm watching, I'm like, oh, this is such beautiful animation. Mm-hmm. It's such a sweet song. And it's like, I know this is nominated for an Oscar, isn't it? Like, Best Original Song? I think uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Which, I'm like, this isn't even the best song in the movie. It's not. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. Oh, there's a there's a lot of bops in here. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of bops? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. we, we get one of the all-time classics coming up right after this. Because... Mm-hmm. I feel like after Baby Mine, that's when we start hitting like real deep musical sections. Oh right? yeah, yeah. Because right after this is where we get um, Dumbo and Timothy Q. Mouse getting turned. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's right. That emotional trajectory again, <laughs> where it's like, ah, oh, Dumbo has fallen to alcoholism. Ah, yeah. oh, so sad. <laughs> Yeah, but you also get the range in this movie because it's been very dreamy mm-hmm. and sweet, and then you get pink elephants on parade, oh, yeah. and it's just like, what am I on? <laughs> this is fucking awesome. I mean, we get this in uh, Fantasmic, and oh, it, right, right. it's one of the best sequences in Fantasmic because it's like the movie's coming to life mm-hmm. in the water, and then you see it in the movie, and it's like, yeah, this is just really great animation. Mm-hmm. It's very, very surreal. And I know the animators who did it, they drew inspiration from uh, one of the great surrealists of the 20th century, Salvador Dali. Oh, that's mm-hmm. right. And watching it, I'm like, this is like like Alice in Wonderland, 1960s psychedelia mm-hmm. almost. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, Reggie, you got any um, thoughts on this Elephants on Parade sequence? Because this feels like out of place of oh, 1941 yeah. oh does it oh my goodness yeah it's yeah like I, it's because for me i grew up with it so mm-hmm. i was just like oh pink elephants on parade you know like i'm just i'm desensitized to it or whatever but then people who've never seen the movie before and they're just like what like what the, <laughs> what the fuck is this you know and weren't we just depressed a minute ago and yeah, now we're tripping out <laughs> exactly <laughs> who did did you slip acid in my drink, <laughs> Exactly. It's the only way you could finish Dumbo. You gotta, you know, <laughs> you gotta take some acid. It was like, I, I gotta stop the tears. <laughs> I can't watch this movie sober anymore. Where's the, where's the champagne? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, but it has some of this imagery. I'm just like, I mean, the ele- pink elephants make sense. Oh, 
they're drunk. He's drunk, mm-hmm. and he, they're, he's an elephant. So of course you don't see pink elephants, you know. Yeah. But um, like like there's that that weird Egyptian scene or whatever, mm-hmm. the pyramids and the the elephant camel or whatever, <laughs> the, and then oh, it turns into a so cobra. Weird. It turns into a belly dancer. The belly of the belly dancer turns into an eye. Like just yeah. like <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> is that oh. some Illuminati <laughs> shit going on? It goes back to the forties. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I was literally watching this last night, and I'm like, oh, it's kind of late, and I was like. You know, watching that sequence, and I was like, okay. And I pinched myself because I'm like, did I fall asleep? Am I dreaming this? I had to, I stopped and I kind of rewound because I'm like, I know Pink Elephants, I know the song, but I'm like, this can't be the imagery, right? <laughs> this is so weird. But it's so cool. So mm-hmm. cool. But that is definitely like, that's got to be like one of the top five like musical sequences mm-hmm. of like the Disney Golden Age, right? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, because it's like it, it's so visually interesting. The music is is kind of it's kind of banging, honestly. Oh no, absolutely, yeah. And it's like it's so weird that no one like goes back and references this because I know like Leonard Malton, a famous oh, movie right. critic. Mm-hmm. This is one of his like Dumbo is like one of his five favorite movies of all time, mm-hmm. and this is like he says, "Oh, this is one of the greatest like cinematic sequences in any film." Yeah, oh, and it's, yeah, and it's kind of wild. And I'm like, people are like, baby mine. I'm like, not pink elephants. That's the sleeper hit here. <laughs> Even Casey Jr. was oh, good. Yeah, I, I love Casey Jr. as a kid. I'm an uh, autistic kid who loved trains, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was on that shit. Well, it's a thing where, you know, we have Casey Jr. at Disneyland. That's one of the attractions there. And, mm-hmm. you know, you see the train and you forget kind of what movie it's from because it's a train. You know? Right. And that's what's like, oh, yeah, you know, this is Casey Jr. You know, that, that makes sense. And then it's like, oh, no, this song, it kind of slaps. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, they tie it in with, you know, I think I can, I think I can. Oh, and I'm yeah. like, they're just tying so many little things together. But, yeah, I really enjoyed the music from this movie. The music's really, really good. And right after Elephants on Parade, when Dumbo wakes up from his hangover, we get yeah. the the bopper. The bopper. The banger. <laughs> I mean, there's waking up from a hangover, and there's waking up from a hangover in a tree. <laughs> With a mouse sleeping on your stomach. <laughs> Which is why I'm sure that Dumbo, the, the Irish have claimed Dumbo as one of their own. Have you? Yes. Okay. But, and this is, okay, so this gets to the other elephant in the room, kind of. Yeah. Uh, the, oh, that's the, right. Uh, the, really, the really, like, kind of racist elephant in the room. Yeah. Uh. So now, Reggie, he I didn't is. know you were you were a racist. Oh yeah, uh, like in Dumbo. Oh, shoot. Oh, been shoot, been found out. Dang it, exposed, <laughs> blasted all. So I guess that that's the thing because when I started the movie, because again, I haven't seen Dumbo before, and I started and it opens like on Disney Plus. I was going to say, did you oh, watch yeah. it on Disney Plus? On Disney Plus, being yeah. like. The views shown in this uh, have not been changed due to the artistic integrity, but Disney has dedicated itself to making uh, a more equal and diverse society, and the depictions here do not reflect our current views. Like, the whole spiel. Yeah. The like, whole spiel. Like, and I was oh like... Oh, God. What am I expecting? <laughs> and I'm sitting here, I'm like, oh, what's gonna, what's it gonna be? And I thought I was like, oh, it's when the, the workers are building the circus, oh, and I'm like... The roustabouts. Yeah, and I'm I like... I had completely forgotten about that. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting there watching, and I'm like, oh, no, yeah. no, no. <laughs> No. And I'm like, okay, this is kind this is kind of rough, but it's all very silhouetted. There's no caricature. The song's a, like a little offensive, don't get me mm-hmm. wrong. But I'm like, okay, I'm not seeing like blackface. I'm not seeing anything bad. It's like, okay, it's ju- it's just offensive. Okay. Right. Sure. It's just offensive. It's ju- <laughs> look, it's it's on um, look, on the degrees of offensive, it's on the it's on the list, all right? <laughs> but then we get to the crows. Uh. Then I'm like, oh, I see you have played the the trump card here. <laughs> oh lord. Yeah, that was so bad. And it's really weird cuz I mm. think we would agree cuz they're kind of um like jive talking, very oh, yeah, characteristic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're you would call them racist caricatures of African Americans, yes. right? But mm-hmm. they are probably the smartest, nicest and most aligned with the hero character in the entire movie. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. There's a lot of discourse about the crows, you know, in the, about in this movie, and it's interesting because, well, um, we watch this now, and you're like, oh gosh, like this is this is kind of problematic, maybe just yeah. a little bit, you know, just a hair, just yeah. a splash exactly. of problems. But like, it's um interesting because, like, in the context of the movie, it's kind of out of place because the whole point of the movie is oh don't uh mistreat people just because they look different from mm-hmm. you you know 
um, this or that, you know, like you be can accepting. Be, yeah, yeah, exactly. Be friends with um people, even if they're, even if you're not supposed to be friends, like well, Dumbo and Timothy, yeah, an elephant and a mouse, you know. And so, um, another subtext to the movie that I feel it casts an entirely different light on the um on the crows, on the rascals, everything, on just the movies um tackling a race, basically, you mm-hmm. know, and because there's a lot going on there, and like even watching it now this time or whatever. You keep hearing this phrase, oh, well, we're a proud race or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. The elephants keep saying that. Yeah. Okay. And, like, oh, directed yeah. at Dumbo. Mm-hmm. And so, but um, as a kid, like, as a kid, I, again, I grew up watching this movie. As a kid, I loved elephants. Mm-hmm. So, as a, and one of the things I learned about elephants is that there are two main kinds of elephants, African and Asian. Yeah. Asian elephants have small ears. African elephants have big ears. Yeah. So, Dumbo is an African elephant born to an asian elephant oh Oh, that makes sense Mm -hmm. and yeah and so he's like the whole the like when they when he's born they reveal the ears and the other elephants are (gasps) oh like Mm -hmm. all scandalized you know Mm -hmm. like and stuff it's like being catty bitches exactly catty bitches you know catty racist bitches you know yeah true karens Mm -hmm. exactly so and then so there's that you know and um when dumbo meets the crows it's kind of like he's meeting kind of like kindred spirits you know like he's meeting people like him who have been cast out mistreated because of their appearance or whatever you know they're both well they're african coded in some Mm -hmm. way different ways you know like um characteristically or physically and then the roustabouts too you know because the roustabouts like they're um black coded obviously you don't get a good look at them but oh they're black and the song is very um uh, kind of like almost like a, a plantation song, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the the lyrics of it are very much in the line of being kind of offensive yeah. to a uh, this right. era of African American. No, workers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But like at the same time, the that well, they're working. The animals are shown working too, including Dumbo and the, the elephants. elephants yeah. yeah, and they're like, and the, the the songs like, oh, we work all day, and we get our pay, we throw it all away, hooray or whatever. Yeah, and it's I, like, yeah, you hear like, that. Oh my god! And so you're like, oh, well, they're happy. But you watch, you listen to that music, you hear the music, you see that scene. It is like, as a kid, I was like, wow, the scene is like really weird and intense. Mm-hmm. Again, that weird trajectory, but it's like. Do they sound happy to you? you know, or no. I'm just like happy to you. <laughs> it's out the there thing. in the rain. Yeah. You've mm-hmm. got these poor animals that have to be paraded around and do these extreme stunts. Mm-hmm. And you have them out there working. And it's like, obviously, you're you're using them because they're muscle. Exactly. You, you can't take a tiger out there and, you know, have them pull a train car. But exactly. it's just like, you know, again, that's animal abuse. Animal, <laughs> like, exactly. And then, animal and it's, abuse. it's coded with people abuse. And, and people too. abuse, exactly. yes. And then so and then you get that last shot of them lifting the, the tent up or whatever, mm-hmm. and then it cuts to the circus all bright the next day or whatever, you know, just like, oh, ha ha, woo, mm-hmm. all happy again, you know? Yeah. But so like, um, yeah, and it's just like, it's just this weird racial subtext to Dumbo that, I mean, it's, I mean, you're like, oh, there's something there, but you're not quite sure what, you know? And like, even the crow, well, the crows, to return to the crows, just a long thing or whatever, just because it's just a lot to unpack, you know? Yeah. Oh, oh this is why we brought you. Oh, you, hey. you brought a list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, the crows, because like, so a lot of people don't know this, but like, with the exception of the leader, well, I will say his name, he isn't, they're, they aren't named in the movie, but on the production material, his name is Jim. So Jim Crow. And so that could, that's, Offend, I could see why that's offensive or whatever, mm-hmm. but like with the exception of him, all the actors are black. They're part yeah. of the, um, I think they're called the Hall Johnson Choir Singers or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so they are black. Those are black ac- actors performing black characters. Mm-hmm. Then there are. Um, the... I, I know the dance sequence, they were like based off of uh, yeah, yeah. also like mm-hmm. um, African American yeah. dancers yeah. and mm-hmm. all those other things. Exactly. Yeah. They brought them in. Uh, they're called the Jackson Brothers. They brought them in and they modeled their dances like after them. So they're not just like, oh, you know, like just, oh, racism, caricature, you know, yeah. like this or that. You yeah, know? yeah. So, yeah. And like, I don't like, and it's, it's tricky because it's like, oh, well, it's a caricature, you know, because mm-hmm. like, because at the time, like animation, you look at it, you're kind of like, if you're trying to make the point these characters are black and like, especially in the context of the story, how would you convey that these non-human characters, you know? Mm-hmm. And they just go and turn the stereotyping up yeah. a right, lot to you get know? it across. Yeah, it. It's one of those things where it is kind of a weird thing to unpack about the movie because the rest of the movie, for the most part, is like really light and mm-hmm. like in, can still kind of play today without any real issues. But once you get there, it's like, 
oh yeah, this is 1941. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. And, exactly. And it and it makes it harder because of the context of the movie where they are, again, mm-hmm. objectively the heroes of the story because they're the ones that are like, no, nah, Dumbo, we can teach you to fly. Like, well, I Dumbo, mean, we can help you. you know, like, Dumbo, they, we're getting they it They tease on him you. because, you know, he's got the huge ears and, you know, who wouldn't tease an elephant that's in a tree? Because right, why right, would you exactly. find an elephant in a tree? But at the same time, you can see their empathy and it's just, mm-hmm. you know... Especially when Timothy goes on his whole spiel where, you know, oh, yeah. how, how, you know, how dare you make fun of him, you know, because he looks a little bit different and mm-hmm. he's been torn up, you know, away from his mother and just all these circumstances and the crows are kind of like, oh damn, you know, it's like, okay, you did look a little funny with the big ears, but you know what? <laughs> I've got a soft spot for you and, you know, I want to exactly. help you. I will say that, see, that, that little particular part, I feel like the message could have made been way more clearly if he had said, you know, like, well... You guys should know about being mistreated, mis like by others just for how you look or whatever. So why you do this to him? You know, I feel like that would have made the point more clearly. Yeah, it would have really pushed forward this <laughs> being a mo- a story about all kinds of acceptance. Mm-hmm. You know, not yeah, because that was something we were talking about in the car, where mm-hmm. you know people associate crows with like the occult and oh, you know, right, right, you know, evil things, and it's like no, crows are just beautiful birds, intelligent right. birds, mm-hmm. and it's like they could have played onto that where it's just you know. They're kind of symbolize these dark things. And it's like, no, crows, you know, are sometimes pets to people. It's just. It's one of the easiest, like, guys, we can slip this past every sensor if we go with the, oh, hey, people think you're birds of, you know, a cult and the devil. How would you think? <laughs> easiest lineup to make this movie, like, pass any sensor, honestly. Mm-hmm. But it's like. It it is really it's it is a complicated thing to right. just unpack. Yeah. But what is not complicated is they have the best song in the movie. Oh, yes, they yes, do. That's right. When mm-hmm. I see an elephant fly, yes. mm-hmm. is a stone a cold gem. banger. Yes, it's a classic. <laughs> mm. It really is. And it was um, it was partly inspired. Well, they're they're kind of like they're riffing off each other or whatever mm-hmm. you know. That was inspired by um, like the back talk on jazz records back at the, di- mm-hmm. the day. So. Oh yeah, yeah, like um, Louis Armstrong. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I saw mm-hmm. that in uh, some of the research where a lot of their their act and their stuff is really based off of that era of African American music mm-hmm. and performance and things like that. And it's like, why do they gotta? Uh, you turn the stereotypes up way too much, <laughs> yeah. guys. I think You're it's so close. It's it's to me. I feel like, personally, I feel it's like, kind of like benign racism or whatever. Oh, like, you are a credit to your race, you know? Kind of like paternalistic, like, you know, like... That very 1940s, right. 50s, mm-hmm. Which, like, oh, they're they're fucking trying. and But right. in 2023, you're like, uh, yeah, exactly. still not there, buddy. Nope. Well, yeah, exactly, you know? And to be, and like, um, other people bring at this point, too. Like, if, like, the crow's like, okay, yeah, today it's offensive, but, like, you watch other cartoons from that time depicting black Ooh, black yeah. and you're like yeah. okay yeah no this is like they this is di- there's something different going on yeah they're both caricatures but this is like the tension is different you know it, like, yeah and it's you know it's a movie about animals i mean yeah. we have people in the the movie but our main characters are the animals it's like why do the animals need to have nationalities well, yeah exactly it's like they're animals just leave them as animals right yeah and we even have that debate today sometimes you know like oh like oh well like you have like um, black actors, um, Mexican, Hispanic actors, mm-hmm. whatever, voicing characters or whatever, and then it's like, well, like, how do you convey their black or Hispanic or whatever? Yeah. It's like, well, why do you need to? You know, they're yeah. they're fish, like like Sebastian or whatever. You know, it's yeah. Kind of he's like, what? He's, he has a Jamaican accent. Well, why? He's a he's a crab. He's a crab. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, like um, just to um put a point on the on this last um this ra- last race discourse about the crows or whatever. Oh, all right, um, cool. Not... We're only like forty minutes in on the diatribe. We're oh, good. okay, good. <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking with you. You're good. You're good. <laughs> um, so um, I I'm not the expert on this. I mean, I love the movie, but there is um. There's another writer, um, her, I have her name here, uh, Nicola Schulman, I believe. She has an article, full-on article about it, and it goes into deeper into um, not just the crows, but like the movie itself or mm-hmm. whatever. She brings up the point that Dumbo is um, it's set in, well, the train is, um, we see the train, it's leaving the station river. They're in Florida, yeah. which was like a super Jim Crow state, you know, mm-hmm. very mm-hmm. segregationist or whatever. And so, yeah, there's like a lot going on there that like, you know, that she's... Yeah. um kind of brings to the surface or whatever about this movie so i'd recommend it again it's the author's name is nicola schulman and i actually link it in my blog on the frida oh cool and let me see where's the the site actually just want to make sure so if y'all want to read it you can get it for yourself something interesting well you're well yeah, you look that up i wanted to bring this up it is interesting that this movie 
is explicitly set in America. And Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the very few that is. It is, yeah. Not only that, it's also taking, you know, place at the same time that it's released. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, so it's taking place during the 40s in America, and this doesn't happen until 20 years later for 101 Dalmatians. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is kind of weird, because when you think of, like, Pinocchio or whatever, all of those movies are taking place in either complete fantasy worlds, dis, mm-hmm. like completely unattached from the reality of the world around it. Do you but, mean fantasy land? Or fantasy land, yes. They <laughs> take place in fantasy land. But with Dumbo, I feel that is something that's almost like implicit, especially with what they're talking about, mm-hmm. you know, acceptance, coming together, mm-hmm. whatever. It's taking place in Florida, mm-hmm. you know, a southern Jim Crow state. And it's like, this has to be on purpose. Like there right. has to be a thing where it's like, Oh yeah, they're the they're the crows and all this other stuff. They're very coded African American. They're very coded in kind of this minstrel esque style. But the whole movie is them coming together and being one, mm-hmm. and they constantly are like, "Oh, the elephants! They're the pure race. They're the this and they're the that. They're coded like very white." And it's like this. The movie has got to be about like like racism Mm -hmm. everyone being Mm -hmm. like no we we can get along just because we look different we can be together it feels like it's coded or it feels like the subtext is very progressive for its time of 41 also out of all the animals in the movie the crows are the smartest because the Mm -hmm. crows are living their own lives they're not trapped in a circus that's right yeah they're also like hey Timothy, we have an idea that will 100% work because we're way smarter than mice because we catch you usually. Yeah. We eat you. Yeah. That, yeah. They give them the magic feather. They do. With their, with their, with their college psychology. Y- yes. <laughs> and, and that brings us to the... Oh, did you find oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. site before so, I yeah. move on? Um, yeah, the site is called um, TLS. I don't know what that stands for, but yeah, TLS. The article is called The Ears Have It, and the author is Nicola Schulman. So yeah, if you want to see more about this racial su- the racial subtext of dumbo um check it out and sorry one last 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 thing about <laughs> the, the last cr- pin yeah, the, the, last, pin is, the, last, the pin is the off last, the page it is on the desk the last of the last pins okay um so um unsurprisingly we don't see the crows off anymore in disneyland disney merchandise or whatever mm-hmm. but um if you've been to disneyland or whatever i well, Mag- california adventure specifically i don't know if you noticed but there are some other friends there named um uh, Panchito Pistoles and Jose yes. Carioca, who are <laughs> the from three another, caballeros. Yes, yeah, who are um from the same era, basically, and are very similar. You know, uh, very similar to stereotypes. Yeah. Or whatever. let's let's oh, yeah. pin have been put yeah. in this. It's it's we're we're mm-hmm. through because after the crows have you know saved the day for Dumbo and teach him how to fly, we get to the climax of the movie, namely the last five minutes of the movie before we hit credits. <laughs> and I feel like. From Dumbo learning to fly to credits, I'm like, why didn't he learn how to fly in like the first like like 20 minutes before this? Why is it that it just kind of, he learns to fly, movie's over? Well, I mean, he gets drunk, somehow learns how to fly. There, there's no explanation, you know, maybe there was like a windy night and it just mm. took them and he a flew. A fizzy lifting drink? Won- Willy Wonka told us this whole story. <laughs> I guess, but in this movie we have a, a magical placebo feather. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we get this great, you know, set where it's the burning building and this building is like 20 feet tall. Because why not? You know, you already have Dumbo in a dangerous situation in the first burning building. Now let's put him even higher and see what happens. And then, you know, we lose the feather and we're, you know, on the edge of our seat. Oh, my God, are they going to crash through? Because let's be honest, Dumbo at this point is like, oh, we'll kill the Dumbo. We'll kill the baby <laughs> elephant. Don't think we won't, kids. <laughs> You're like, you You haven't even seen Bambi. That's our next one. Oh, we'll get you. We'll get you good. We're going to wreck you. <laughs> and then, yeah, you know, Timothy's pleading, pleading, and Dumbo's like, all right, I'll trust you, and takes off and flies, and everyone's just, you know, in awe, and all the clowns are being, you know, hunted down, and it's like, <laughs> it's like, yes, after that, they did the Dumbo, like, yeah, go after the clowns. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love when he swallows up the, the cart of peanuts mm-hmm. and then, you know, just pelts all the Karen elephants. That's I was right. like, fuck yeah, go after those Karens. Uh, yes. Dumbo ain't one of these turn the other cheek kind of guys. <laughs> He's like, oh no, we're coming for revenge. I'm coming for your ass. <laughs> Dumbo is the first revenge story for children. Oh, yes, yes. Why do you think I love it so much? <laughs> Reggie's like, I throw peanuts at people everywhere. Mm-hmm. You're like, ha, oh, you make me angry? Pocket peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go to your car, just, you know, trunk load of peanuts. You're like, I- I'm always ready. I'm always packing. Exactly. But we, we get to this, the ending of Dumbo, and it's very sweet, and it's very nice, but it, it feels 
rush is is not the wrong and rush is the wrong word but it feels very very like we hit the climax wrap it up boys we're done yeah mm-hmm. do you know if this was like they ran out of money or was it a thing where it's like they expanded a short film and they're like the ending is the ending kind of thing do you, are you, are you what are your thoughts on the ending of the movie yeah i'm not sure because yeah i mean because again grew up this movie so i'm just desensitized everything okay he learns to fly and then everybody loves him and he gets his mom back you know <laughs> i'm like okay boom yeah like um that's like yeah it's just like logical story you know right there perfect logic i, li- and- I, I like the logic it's like we're gonna learn how to fly step two Step three, mom back. Yeah, exactly, it, exactly. And you get that nice little newsreel of all like, oh, um, uh, Dumbo uh, gets his ears insured. Oh, he sets a new record. Oh, dumb bombers for ex- uh, for defense or whatever. <laughs> and then <laughs> dumb bombers for defense. Yeah. He's on covers of magazines, mm-hmm. which also kind of ties in with you know uh, later history with the movie. Was he was supposed to be on Time magazine in December of forty one. Forty one, oh. and that's when. Pearl Harbor happened. Oh shit! So Damn. yeah, but it was just Dumbo was that big of a impact and you know mm-hmm. pop culture that they were like, no, he has to be on Life magazine because he has just made a huge impact on everybody that's seen this movie, mm. which is phenomenal. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like it's yeah, like, like you said, it's phenomenal. It's just um, and I don't know, like because like I said, well, I just I said logically it doesn't make a lot of sense, but the ending is just you really feel it, you know, yeah. like like that last piece. That, that plays with during his flight or whatever, it's called Triumph. And like, that's just how, how it is. That's mm-hmm, what I feel yeah. it is, you know? Like, you just feel it, and then they're on the train, you know? And they're reprising when I see an elephant fly. Everybody's mm-hmm. happy. Even all the Karen, bitch Karen elephants, they're all singing for him or whatever, you know? After, <laughs> after he pelted them with peanuts or whatever, you know? But you got Mama Jumbo, who's and got the nice uh-huh. train car. Exactly. She's got a seat back there where that's she's just right. posted up. It, it's mm-hmm. the whole stereotype of the kid being like, I finally made it. I'm going to go buy my mom a house, you know, mm-hmm. and do the whole nine yards. Exactly. It, it's a very sweet ending, and it's a very sweet movie. And I think that's the key to Dumbo. Of It's the most emotionally pure story from this Disney, like mm-hmm. the early Disney Golden Age stuff. And the plot is like, the plot's just there for us to like tie into the emotion, the heartstrings, the music, the animation. Right. It's so just emotionally devastating and emotionally heartwarming at the same time for a character that never speaks mm-hmm. yeah True. that's right and he's i think the only disney protagonist that has never spoken True. Oh, yeah. I th- which is funny because he does make noises and yeah. mm-hmm. you know t- tying in the person who does the voice of dumbo his noises is mel blank mm-hmm. is he? yes he the voice oh, of little man all, of a thousand voices the voice wow. of all the looney tunes mm-hmm. and that, that must have been like hey disney I mean, I'm going to voice one of your most iconic characters, and then I'm going to voice your entire competition, because I <laughs> am the god of the voice actors. <laughs> uh, that's how you do it. Just yeet it on them. <laughs> true. But that's, and that's like the thing, you know, it's, it's just, it's just such a sweet ending. It is after, you know, you kind of take a beating for the whole movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. what makes it worth it, right? <laughs> I guess. But I mean, that's a short ending. It's like, <laughs> we're all happy now. The end. Like. <laughs> <laughs> you're like life isn't like that <laughs> uh, but you know dumbo huge like nice touchstone for a lot of a lot of people's childhoods right yeah y- yours in particular Mr. Oh, yes yes but it's one of those things because we talk about you know walt disney the 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 man the myth the legend but also the disney company right yeah and disney had this very interesting way of making sure their movies kind of always made money even if they weren't successful, like Pinocchio was a flop, right? But right. I think eventually it made its money back because oh, yeah. eventually it just made it home video. But before that, and with Dumbo, it's the Disney business model. And I find that kind of fascinating about these, where they would just re-release these movies like every, like, what, 10 years, five years, something like that? Yeah. And I was wondering, was was Dumbo one of those uh, movies you caught on, like, VHS or was it, like, a Disney channel? They just, mm-hmm. like, re-released it on TV kind of thing? Oh, yeah. We had the VHS. We had all the um, the Disney movies, like, on VHS and the big, um, like, clam the clam boxes. Box. The white yes, boxes. that's right. The white boxes. <laughs> that's right. But, you know, speaking of VHSs, this was the first ever Walt Disney animated feature to be put on video cassette. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. See, everybody, I, I found a segue to get us there. All right. I had VHSs. a feeling. Yeah. So it was the first one to make it to video cassette. Uh, it was released in 1981, but only for rental. And it was a thing where I guess people, you know, were, you know, renting it so much. That's when they finally decided, okay, we need to 
sell this on VHS. Or home video. On home video, yeah. Well, VHS, same thing. <laughs> and then it first, you know, released on DVD in 2001. It's weird that they decide to pick Dumbo as the first one. Because it is it is the shortest, like, feature, mm-hmm. feature um, Walt Disney production, right? Right. Um, but it's interesting that they picked this one. I would figure like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs because that was the first. Or, yeah, the first right. one, or maybe like even Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty, because mm-hmm. I think I think those two probably are like the biggest like name brand, right? Yeah, you know. But it's like Dumbo, and I'm like, yeah, best foot forward, right? Because I I really like this I really like this movie. Yeah, I mean it's a good movie. It's got its problematic areas <laughs> in it, and it has its heartbreak and soul shattering moments, but. Yeah, it's a good movie. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's one of my favorites, of course. And it's um, what is it? Oh, it was Walt's favorite, right? Yes, yes. that's yes. right. So, and also, I I don't think we can, you know, not mention that Reggie dressed for the part today. <laughs> he did. He did. That's we've, right. we've been hiding the fact that he is wearing a full elephant costume right now. <laughs> um, he it's pretty strong. I should have done that. <laughs> we we couldn't fit him through the door. We're yeah. we're recording outside today. <laughs> I would have been so hyped if that was why you were you were late today is you showed up just dressed in an elephant <laughs> okay, costume. Yeah, I'd be yeah. like completely completely okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, awesome. Totally fine. No, but when you came in I was like I love your shirt. Oh, thank so you. I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that and the pink, you know, cuz oh, it reminds yeah, me of, you know, right. uh, about this. Mama Jumbo cuz her oh, cat. That's right. Yeah. That's why I was like is he bounding today? Yeah. I'm like he's doing a good job. <laughs> I was like, I, I don't have anything Dumbo. I'm like I had to wear my my Howl's Moving Castle shirt cuz the feather. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Yeah, perfect. I'm wearing a Reanimator T-shirt, so this is uh, this is unrelated. Oh, you <laughs> wear that cool. shirt all the time. It's true. Uh, so, anybody got any final thoughts on Dumbo? Oh man, I had to say it all dramatic too. <laughs> yeah, it's um, yeah, it is a just yeah. I I can't describe like just how like I like I said like I feel like this movie really helped mold just um, well, just like my creative sensibility you know i just watch it and I'm like, oh i feel like this this is where i get this from like mm-hmm. and like just the way i relate to it and like just in my interactions or whatever like you guys like like oh hey what like what's up with the end it doesn't make sense i'm like what are you talking about of course it makes perfect <laughs> sense you know? you're like he learns to fly and it's over what, yeah, what do you want exactly what do you want what do you need a roadmap <laughs> What do you want? The Adventures of Dumbo. He's yeah. crime fighting now. Yeah. He is Batman. <laughs> exactly. Post credit scene. Dumbo. I want to talk to you about the Avengers Initiative. <laughs> oh, I, I wanted to mention this. So I guess in like 2001 they tried to make a sequel to this. Oh, did no. they? Oh shoot, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, because it it was like in the early 2000s, and they were going, they were thinking of making a sequel to Dumbo because they were like, all right, it made a bunch on home video. This is one of those things where it's just making a lot of money. You know, hey. Can we make a sequel to this? And I guess they thought about it, but it's in one of the it's the thing about Disney where things can be in development hell for like thirty oh, yeah, years yeah, for yeah. like whatever reason. Because I know there's like a bunch of random movies that have like full storyboards like built out for sequels to Disney movies. You'd wouldn't think it should have sequels. Like I think Aristocrats has one of those. Oh, and yeah, like yeah, Robin yeah, Hood right. has one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a bunch of those like that. But yeah. Dumbo was very close to having a sequel and i'm wondering what the hell that would have been (laughs) god only knows well well to be fair a lot of disney movies do have the sequels you know the the cheap quills you know oh lady and the tramp lady and tramp 2 aladdin prince of thieves oh yeah exactly and return of jafar return of jafar yeah Yeah. so there's three of them (laughs) yeah Aladdin, I, I remember Aladdin just having like one a year or something like that when I was a kid. I know that's probably not true, but Didn't I remember they being have a the, bunch the, of them. They had the TV show. They had the TV show also. Oh, Maybe that's, that's what you're it. thinking. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at least it's not the Tim Burton uh, remake. Oh, my God. So I, wanted, I have I wanted, a whole episode right there for anything. You guys. <laughs> so I want to want, want to make a quick run on that one because uh, Tim Burton is uh, Boo, Miss Becky's favorite director of all time. One of them, yeah. I love Tim Burton, but I refuse to watch the the Dumbo movie. Oh uh, yeah, no. I, I, w- I wish I could say I was like, oh, what's it called? Oh, you should see it. But I'm like, no, I, I should say good. Yeah, stick with that. But I'm like, I'm of the mind that you should watch everything, even if it's bad, so you can hate it properly. You know, <sighs> so you know why I hate it. <laughs> because I, I did yes. watch that. See, I, at least Reggie, yeah. you know, encourages my hate. <laughs> <laughs> you should watch the movie. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So, but you did watch it. I did. Does it hold a candle? Yes, it's one of the. Oh God, that, that's a, <laughs> oh, a that's an insulting question. That's so so bad. It's almost an insult to Tim Burton that he was involved 
with this movie. Like, yeah. I watch it. I'm just like, I'm kind of like, I, I have, I have this consp- old conspiracy theory that he did not direct that Alice in Wonderland live action Alice in Wonderland movie back in the day. I also have this conspiracy theory that he did not direct Dumbo either. That they were both made by a committee or something. And they slapped his name on it because they're both hmm. so bad and just like. I can't get into the reasons right here. It, it, it is the uh, issue of late stage Tim Burton where mm-hmm. it feels like he is so wrapped up in his like own aesthetic that he forgets to tell the the stories kind of oh, thing. Oh, right, right, right. God, God. Which I will say, funnily enough, on paper, that should work for Dumbo because Dumbo was a lot of just vibing, you know, <laughs> like it has meanders. But it, it's like he, he had the groundwork for like in the movie Big Fish with the circus thing. I'm like, bro, yeah. that's like half the aesthetic for Dumbo. Like you have yeah. it right there. Exactly. But yeah, watch it because it's terrible, but there are some ironic laughs to be had. Trust hmm. me, I, I there were moments where I was like laughing my ass off in the theater and like the other two people in the movie were like, what the fuck is this dude laughing at? <laughs> the other two people were like, this is such a sad scene. Why is he laughing? And you're like, <laughs> ah, Tim Burton, you fool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> but yeah, so overall, I really like Dumbo. This is a two thumbs up movie for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, two thumbs up as well. Yeah, three thumbs up for me. <laughs> Where'd you I'm get a, the third thumb? Where did I'm you a find Chernobyl that? baby? <laughs> it's a Chernobyl baby. <laughs> thought I'd reveal it to you right now. <laughs> I thought you just had like a hand, you know, somewhere oh, you're yeah. like, oh yeah, somewhere. I, I, I took it. I took it from a guy, you know, yeah, yeah. a monkey's paw. <laughs> <laughs> but next week, what are we watching? Next week, we're watching. Well, this is a new movie for both of us. Mm-hmm. I mean, granted, I didn't know that this was a new movie to you because I thought Dean had seen Dumbo before, but apparently oh, no. not. Uncultured mm-hmm. swine. <laughs> wow. But yeah, next week we have uh, best friend to the podcast coming back, Ariel. She is our guest host next mm-hmm. week, and she is bringing one of her favorites onward. A new one by Pixar. Oh, yeah. oh, interesting. Yeah. Have you seen Onward? I saw Onward, yeah. Like, during the pandemic, right? Yeah, it came out in the, the cursed year of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it coming out and everyone really liking it, but because it was a pandemic movie, I remember it not doing very well. It was yeah. like right before the world shut down. Mm-hmm. But Reggie, you saw it. and You want to give us the pitch before we go into it? So, uh, well, I haven't seen it since it came out, but it's like they live in a, it's like an alternate world where elves and troll and goblins like exist fantasy creatures exist mm-hmm. and they middle like, earth yes yeah yes. middle earth yes exactly. no wonder she brought <laughs> yes she knows me <laughs> <laughs> and they've like uh evolved like humans or whatever mm-hmm. so now they live in like a modern quote-unquote civilized society they have cars they go to school and stuff and they don't believe in magic anymore but there are like there's two brothers and like uh their dad gets um he gets uh, enchanted or whatever and he like his top half disappears or whatever mm-hmm. and they have to go on a quest to um reverse it or whatever so yeah, yeah. there's more to it obviously but yeah that's what i remember all right <laughs> um, i'm in it's an adventure movie <laughs> there's also a van in it oh there. right right a metal van <laughs> oh that sounds pretty good because I really hope you know something cool on there you know myself along with the audience has just learned that dean you know really wants one of these like metal vans from the 70s i I want one of those i want one of those vans like i want the a-team van but i want the side you know so i can like paint random shit on it right you know like the fucking dragons and shit on the the battle of of middle earth oh yeah dude i've known this man for 10 years and this has never come up until this year and i'm kind of afraid i'm like is he going through like an early midlife Uh crisis i am not even close to my midlife jesus i know that's why i'm saying early you know now you you want to have a van you want to paint it you want to you know go like a shag carpet samples oh. just go all out but if they wanted to hear about this cool van life where can they go <laughs> if you want to listen to us on a different platform than you currently are you can find us on apple Podcasts, spotify google podcasts and youtube yep you can go to our youtube channel the film vault that is the film vault on youtube you can like comment subscribe and we'll upload eventually a slideshow version of this podcast Yay. Uh, but if you wanted to check out anything else where can they go you could go to our social media which is instagram at the film club podcast where we post daily stories upcoming episodes random adventures we go on and reggie would you like to plug anything before we leave as always the past couple times i come on here if you want to um follow what i'm doing see hear more of what i have to say or watch what i've been watching on from movies for this podcast or whatever you can follow me on instagram at reggie the writer that's r-e-g-g-i-e the writer all one word no caps no spaces and um oh so this isn't movie related but um i've got an event coming up next month the june 17th at libro mobile it's a little bookstore in downtown not in downtown santa excuse me in santa Ana, and um they it's a community bookstore and i'm 
ho- um, hosting. A, well, I'm going to be in conversation with um, local author, my, local author, my friend Maritza Rubio, oh, wow. about her book uh, Maria, Maria, and other stories. And so um, it's been um, sh- it's been long listed for the National Book Award, I believe. She's gone to uh, the San Antonio Book Festival, the LA Times Festival of Books to discuss it or whatever. So yeah, it's a free event, and yeah, um, I'll be talking with her about it at Libre Mobile on um, June seventeenth. So yeah, very cool. All right, then everyone, we'll see you next week at the Film Club. Peace.